let's hope that this works. I'm waiting to see my face. <laughs> okay. You gotta, okay, there we go. There we go. Gotta love the playback. Okay, hi guys. Uh, I'm just gonna pop out the chat here so I can chat with some people. Of course, I was a little bit late coming on because YouTube didn't want to work for me. It was so kind of them. It was not kind at all. Um, oh, hi, Mom. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome. Glad you could join me today. <clears throat> it's my first video of 2024. I took two weeks off. It was a very long two weeks, but I'm very, very happy to be back in my office. Um, so, so happy because it's been way too long. Um, hi, everyone. I'm great. Thank you. Um, I just, yeah, so I wanted to do a color mixing video today. I thought it would be fun to kind of ease back into painting and not really feel the pressure to paint anything specific, but uh yeah, just have fun today. I'm just going to read some of these comments. You have the same black top on. Mine's from Aerie. I love this sweatshirt. Hi, guys. Um, did I write to you in the right way these days? I don't know. Anyway, okay. So I am going to be showing you how to color mix with a limited palette. So I took to Instagram this morning and I asked people to give me some paint colors that they'd like to learn how to mix without having to buy the actual paint. So that's what I'm going to show you to do today. Um, and I have six colors in my palette. So we're doing a limited palette. These are my Mary Blue watercolors, which I actually haven't really used very much at all. Um, they sent me some to try, and so I picked six that are primary-ish, and I'll explain which six I picked uh, based on what's best for color mixing of what I had. Um, and then you guys can also give me some colors in the chat here so I can try and mix them as well. Now there are some things that are unable, we're, not, we're unable to mix. Um, some people were asking, how do you mix a pink? And besides the white and red kind of thing, it's kind of almost impossible to mix a pink, which is why I always include it in my limited palette, which I will go through. So stuff like that, pinks, um, any kind of primary colors, it's a little bit harder to mix. You can mix a red, which is fun, but as far as mixing a primary blue, it's gonna be very difficult, but I'm gonna show you how to mix a bunch of different things. Um, Happy New Year, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, and yeah, okay, so I'm gonna switch my camera around and I will show you what I'm talking about. Uh, full painting. There we go. Oh, oh, my lighting. Oh, my lighting. <laughs> you gotta love that. Okay, let me turn off the big lights. One second. Uh, uh, there's the big lights. I feel like my ring light here is still too much. Oh, and now that's too low. <laughs> Trying to find lighting without natural light is really difficult. Okay, hold on. One sec. <coughs> I'm also going to try not to have a coughing attack. Um, because I'm still getting over a cold. Because we all got sick this for the holidays. So that was fun. Okay, so here is my palette. This actual palette is from uh, Ellie Panda Pottery. I got it on Etsy. It's really cute. And the colors that I have in this palette, like I said, are from My Mary Blue. I have primary yellow, so I'm actually going to swatch them so you can see the actual colors. Okay. Okay, so here's primary yellow, which this primary yellow is a bit more on the cool side. And one thing to take note of, if you're going to do a limited palette, it's important to have our primary colors, so yellow, red, and blue, in a warm and cool tone. So I'm going to go through kind of what a warm and cool tone of each are. So primary yellow would be a bit more on the cool side. It leans a bit more towards green, thinking like a bright lemony color, almost like a neon, not neon, but like a neon yellow. And then a warm yellow, this one is cadmium yellow deep, 
leans more to the orange side. So it almost has this orangey tint to it. That's how you can tell the difference between a cool yellow and a warm yellow. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cannot see full screen. My bad. Okay. So primary yellow is cooler and then cadmium yellow deep is warmer. So in different brands, colors may vary. So I'm just going by this My Merry Blue. So if you don't even know the colors, temperature necessarily, or the brands, like here, I also have my other palette here. This is my Winsor Newton really, really dirty palette. But you can see this yellow here. See how it kind of matches that primary yellow? It has this lemony neon yellow to it. That would be a cool yellow. And then this one you can't really see. This is a cadmium yellow. It's a bit warmer. Um, so that's how you can tell the difference there. And then our reds, this one is permanent red light, which I will show you. And this is a warmer red and you can tell that it's a warmer red cause it leans a bit more towards orange thinking war. So our warm colors, let me get out my handy dandy color wheel here. Our warm colors are red, orange, and yellow, right? And then our cool colors are green, blue, and purple. So if we think red, if it leans a bit more towards an orange, it's going to be an, a warm red. If the red were to lean more towards purple, it would be a cool red. So pinks are actually considered cooler reds. Even though it's pink, it's considered a cool red. Um, there are some reds that are just like a bit more like a cherry kind of red and they're considered cool reds as well. But I find when using a limited palette, when you're choosing two different reds, I would choose a warm red, which leans a bit more towards orange and then a pink, which is a cooler red. You're going to get the best mixing out of those two options. Okay. Sorry guys. I know it was cut off. <laughs> My bad. Okay. And then we have ultramarine deep, which is a warm blue, which I, this, this blue is always the tricky one because no matter which way blue goes, if it leans more towards green or purple, it's leaning towards a cooler color. But for some reason, the rule is if the blue is leaning more towards like a purple, it's going to be leaning more towards red and it just makes for a, hold on. Did I say cooler? I can't even, oh, no, a warmer red or, or a warmer blue. This is the tricky part is the blue. So a warm blue are most like ultramarines, cobalts, like so. And the way to differentiate them, the easy way, is that our other blues have a, more of a turquoisey kind of undertone to them. So like this Prussian blue, I feel like is a bit more on the turquoise side, has a bit more of it's so leaning a bit more towards green. Okay, so there are our six colors. And then in the palette, I also added some white watercolor because some colors that you might wanna mix, actually you would use white. And if you look at some of the colors that are in tubes, for example, I'm gonna show you how to mix um, Daniel Smith's Buff Titanium the best I can. If you actually look at the pigment information, which I usually don't, is it on here? It usually is, light fast. And does it, does it have the pigment number? I might be lying here. Oh, PW6, I believe that is, has white in it. And like stuff like lavender, the ones that are a bit more, um, what are they called? Opaque, tend to have white in it. So I added white in the palette. Okay, your description of warm and cool was great. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into mixing. So I actually asked people on Instagram what colors they would like to mix. Um, my favorite colors to mix are greens. I love mixing greens. They're just so much fun. So I thought we'd do like an array of greens. Um, lots of different things. Let me just get the post up quickly so I can see. Okay, let's actually let's start with buff titanium. So I'm actually going to do a little swatch here of buff titanium, um, which is one of my fun colors that I like to use in my palette right now. And it's like this warm beige kind of color. It's actually really pretty. I'm just going to use a bit. Okay. Now I would usually mix this color to mix this color 
in with my regular paints, I would mix a bit of yellow ochre and, oh, I could have used it, it's right there, and burnt umber with a bit of white to get it. But let me see if I can do it. So looking at this color, what is the pink color? I missed it. Uh, primary red magenta. Um, so to get this color, I'm looking at it and it, it looks beige. So beige is kind of, it derives a little bit from brown. So I know I need to mix some sort of brown and then because it's a bit more on the opaque side, I need to add some white. So looking at our color wheel here, to make brown, all you have to do is mix two, um, oh my goodness, my brain, I've been off painting too long. Complementary colors, <laughs> holy moly. So those are the colors that sit across from each other on the color wheel. So red and green, yellow and purple, blue and orange. My favorite brown mixture to make, and kind of looking at this, the closest would be like an orange or a red, right? Like you don't see much blue in this, it's a bit warmer. Um, I would say this combination might work, but I tend to go for more of a red and green mixture. So let's mix a little bit. Actually, because our permanent red light is a bit more on the orangey side, that will probably work really, really well. So we need to also make green to do this. So I'm going to take a little bit of my warm cadmium yellow. Then I'm going to take some of my blue. Now, you can go either way. I feel like because this turquoise, it wants to lean more towards green. You'll get a brighter green with this and a duller green with this one. And this doesn't look too bright, so I'm going to try and mix a little bit of this blue. Okay, so we're mixing yellow and blue here and we get this kind of muted greenish color. Now, Let's mix some white because we know we need a little bit of white in there to make the buff titanium. Okay, to make it a little bit more opaque. And that's definitely not it. But it's closer. So I'm seeing a bit more green in here. I need to see a bit more warmth. So a bit more maybe reddish or brown. So I'm going to start mixing little bits of color into there. So I might mix a little bit more of this permanent, what is it? Permanent red light. In there now that might have been too much right it's a bit more on the reddish side too much but I feel like it's a little bit closer so I want to neutralize it a bit so I'm going to let's try a little bit of blue and that kind of dulls it down and makes it a bit more gray let's add a bit more white here okay and I feel like maybe a bit more yellow Add a bit more yellow in there. Okay, you really just kind of have to play around, and I feel like that is a lot closer. See? It's just, a, this is a little bit more yellowy, so I would even add a little bit more brighter yellow. A little bit more white. Maybe even a bit more white to make it a bit more opaque. And I believe we have something that resembles buff titanium. Now this one is a little bit more yellowy. I would just be very sparing with yellow. I think the lighter yellow is a bit better. There we go. I feel like I have it. Or at least it's close enough. Let me get some from my palette here. It's a little bit more brownie, but like super, super close. Okay, and that's kind of how I mix buff titanium. Now that's like a pretty out there color that not everyone's gonna wanna mix. I'm gonna mix more um, kind of mainstream colors, but that one is kind of how I would do a bit more of a difficult mix, okay? Okay, so let's do some greens because I love greens. So we know that to mix green, you mix blue and yellow. So we have two different yellows, two different blues here. Let's just try mixing some and just seeing where we go. So here is our warm blue that just kind of has this bit of a red undertone to it. I'm going to put it in two different spots so we can mix both yellows with it. 
and I'm going to mix it. I'm going to tell you why you get the outcome that you do. Now, Persian blue, I don't actually use all that often. So we might get more like some surprises here that I don't really know as well. Um, but I felt like it was a bit cooler. So our ultramarine actually has some sort of warm tendencies to it. So it has a bit of pink in there. So mixing, if you think about it, if you're mixing yellow with blue that has a little bit of pink, you're going to get more of a muted blue or muted green, sorry. But if you have a blue here that really wants to mix a green, it's leaning more towards green, you're going to get a brighter green. So I'm going to show you with our lemon yellow what I mean. So this is a bright yellow that wants to mix a green with a blue that wants to mix a purple, you're going to get kind of like a more of an earthy green. Okay, more of a natural green, I find. And then same kind of with this one, this one wants to mix a warm color, this one wants to mix a warm color that are not green, you're going to get a muddy, but not necessarily muddy, you're going to get a more of a, na a natural neutral tone like an olive. Okay. So I'm going to give it a bit more blue. And depending on <clears throat> depending on the amounts of each color you have, so if you have more of the yellow, you're going to get more of like a yellowy olive green. If you have more blue, you'll get a darker kind of moss green or earthy kind of green. See the difference? So mixing with ultramarine, you're not going to get bright, bright greens. You're going to get more earthy tones because it wants to mix purple. It doesn't want to mix green. But if we mix with our Prussian blue, you're going to get these bright greens like this. See that? Which I don't necessarily love. I don't really love bright, bright greens. I find they look a little bit kind of fakish, but that's okay. And then this one might be a little bit more muted, just a tiny bit, a bit more natural, just because this wants to mix uh, with a red to create an orange. So this you're going to get more of a sap kind of neutral green. Okay, and one of my favorite, favorite, favorite greens to uh, use is perline green, which is this dark green here. I love this green. Okay, it's like a dark kind of moody Windsor Newton green. I love it. So I'm going to try and mix this. Okay. So because it's on the darker side and it's not necessarily a bright color, I'm going to use my uh, ultramarine. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I'm going to use my ultramarine here and it's dark. So I want to make sure it's nice and saturated with blue. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, and then we want to make our green. So it's not necessarily, hmm. Usually when I mix it with my other colors, I'll do like a hooker's green with a purple. So I'm going to create a purple just the way I do things. I don't know why I do it like this. So I'm going to create a purple with our ultramarine and then the pink. Make it nice and dark. And then I'll create a green, a lighter green here. Let's do, let's do this one. And then mix it with purple. You actually kind of get a darker gray. A little bit more yellow, more blue, a bit more pink. And while it might not be exact, you just kind of keep adding <laughs> and you get this kind of darkish obviously the more paint you used the darker it's going to be but you get something pretty similar see that you could also do the same thing it actually might work better with the Prussian blue it's because it's a bit more of an intense Blue. Let's try that. So yellow, blue. So that's a really intense green. And then add some, 
pink to it. Makes it darker but with a bit more blue. And that's a bit too blue. <laughs> you just got to keep adding, guys. Tad bit more pink. And that might actually be closer. Well, I don't know. But either, either way, they're similar, okay? So that's kind of what we're going for. <clears throat> uh, let me see what people are saying. I've been trying to get Potter's Pink. Now I don't feel so bad about not being able to get the results I want. So yeah, you, Potter's Pink, you'll need a pink. I'll show you how to make like a dusty rose um, that might be a little bit similar. I don't have a Potter's Pink. Um, but I think Potter's Pink is a very granulating paint. So I think you might... A lot of people want to buy Potter's Pink for those properties more so than just the color. It's a very granulating paint. And for those who don't know what granulating is, um, ultramarine is a bit granulating. It's when the color kind of separates a bit and has a bit more texture to it. So if you are painting with ultramarine and mixing with ultramarine, I don't know if you can see that or not. See how it kind of separates and has this texture to it. You can see which ones I've mixed with ultramarine. They separate and they have a bit more texture to it. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> yeah, these are more like vintagey greens, which I love mixing. So it's always worth a try to just, you know, try and mix more greens. Ultimately, you just want to mix your primary colors in different combinations. And if you're kind of like more of a type A person who likes to keep track of all that stuff, keep track of your mixing by writing down the colors that you're doing or videotape it so you can kind of go back and see. Okay, let's also mix some purples because purples are tricky. Oh, actually, hold on. Uh, no, we're good because we know how to make like an olive. You, <clears throat> you can also do an olive by mixing a blue and a yellow. And if it's still too bright like this, add a little bit of either like red or pink and that will mute it for you. Okay, let's mix some purples. The best way to mix a purple color is pink and blue, either blue. I'll show you why, because when we run into issues with mixing a purple with red and blue, a lot of the times the reds that people are using are too warm. They have that orange bias to them and they have a little bit of yellow in them, which mutes the color. And then you end up with this kind of grayish, <clears throat> excuse me, purple color. So I'll kind of give you um, an idea of what doesn't work with purple if you want that bright, bright, bright purple. Okay, because this color has a little bit of yellow to it. And mixing yellow into a purple is, it makes it brown. Okay, so I'll show you mixing both blues. Actually, that's not too bad. Um, but it's more of a muted purple. You can get a nice muted purple by mixing it with like an orangey or red. See, this is more what I'm talking about, this kind of grayish purple, which isn't a bad color. It's just not that bright color. So now let me show you what it looks like with pink. <coughs> Excuse me for the coughing. Of course this happens. Okay. So we have our magenta mixing with ultramarine. Like, look how vibrant that is. That's a bit more on the blue side. But see how you get that vibrant blue? And then to make more of like a mauve color, I would just add more pink to it. And then you have mauve. You want to go darker to make more of an indigo. Add more blue. I love this color. So pretty. Okay, and then let's try with Prussian blue. That's too much Prussian blue. Let's go back and add more pink. Nice bright purple. See the difference between these kind of muted grayish purples and then the brighter ones. And then again, just adding more of one color will give you a different hue. And then like an indigo kind of color. So pretty. Um, let's see what people are saying. How about a variety of grays? Okay, we can try some grays. Uh, la 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 la. 
Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's let's do a muted pink really quickly before we do some grays. Okay, so a muted pink, what I would do is I would take pink and you wanna add its contrasting colors. So again, looking at our color wheel, pink derives from red. You wanna add a little bit of green. So you wanna add a little bit of a blue and a yellow. It's easier if you have a green paint, but just like the tiniest, tiniest bit. Okay, so I'll take a little bit of blue here and a little bit of yellow, okay? And I would mix it and it makes a bit more of this like dusty rose kind of color so it's not as bright okay <clears throat> and that's how you would do a muted pink okay so for grays again we're kind of hmm if I remember correctly my favorite gray is to mix equally purple and green which are both secondary colors so we have purple here so let's see what happens when we add both yellows to it okay so we have purple Let's mix green in there. And this is also how you get black. There's a gray. Okay, so that's with the lemon yellow, or not the lemon yellow, the primary yellow. Let's see about the cadmium yellow. Maybe a bit more. This makes it a bit more brown. So you could always add a bit more, maybe blue to your brown. And that makes a really nice gray. And then if you want it to be a little bit warmer, you can just add a little bit more yellow. A warm kind of gray. And to make it lighter or darker, I would add more water to make it lighter. So you can get this really, really light value. See that? Or if you want to make it darker, let's just mix all of this in here. And add a little bit of yellow. Okay. You would add more paint. Okay, so I two really great ways to mix um, a really nice gray is purple and green. So just maybe making a purple and then adding a yellow to it. Or um, even if you have burnt umber and ultramarine, it makes such a beautiful gray too. <clears throat> um, let's see what people are saying. When doing a floral composition, is there any rhyme or reason for what greens? No, not at all. It depends on what vibe you're kind of going for. Um, it's always good to work out a color palette beforehand, uh, but it's totally up to you. It does. It doesn't really. Um, it doesn't mean. It doesn't really matter. Depends on what kind of color palette you're going for. So let me just look at the. Instagram. Oh, lavender. People were also wondering. Um, that is one where you would add some white to a purple. So again, making our little bit of purple here like that. And then I would add a little bit of white to make it more opaque. Oops. Of course, I'm mixing it with gray. That's a bit more on the purple side. I'm going to grab a bit more blue. Mm, that's too much blue. You get this beautiful lavender color, which I love right now. I can hear my kids running downstairs. It's so cute. Um, <laughs> let me just clear up this area. And if you have any other um, colors that you'd like to see mixed, let me know. I'll do a couple of different like blue tones. So some people were asking about turquoise super easy you're just adding little bits of yellow to your blue and you can go either way the best is going to be the color that is closest to that wants to lean and make blue but let's just see what happens when we add a tiny bit to this this is not going to make a turquoise you want a cool blue okay but i'll show you so a tiny bit of yellow just a tiny bit you want it to be mostly blue okay more on the blue side okay you can add a bit oops a bit more make it kind of like a sea kind of green an ocean green there's just so many 
ways you can go with it. And then you can even add your white. Now, a lot of people are against adding white watercolor to their colors. And <clears throat> traditionally, yes, speaking, you're, you're not supposed to, supposed to use white. If you want to make a color lighter, you would add more water to it. And so it's just a very light value. But I don't care to follow all the rules. And sometimes I want a more opaque kind of pastel -y color. So in that sense, use white if you like to use white, because it really doesn't matter. It's totally up to you. Um, peach or blush. That's a good idea too. Okay. Well, let's actually just add a little bit of yellow to this blue and just see if we can get some sort of like turquoisey color. It's not bad. It's more of like a dusty blue. Because again, it has that little bit of red in the blue that gives it that complementary color that m mutes it. So it doesn't really want to mix a turquoise, but you can get a nice dusty blue that way. Okay, let's do some peaches and pinks. <clears throat> okay, so I would go for pink, but we'd also couldn't, we can go for reds. Totally up to you. Mm, this is just more, honestly, this color is just this color with yellow. Like, let me see if I can match it. Okay, so here's our permanent red light. Let me add some of our yellow to it. And it's very similar. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> very similar, okay? Permanent red light, and that's magenta and yellow. Now to do kind of like a peachy color, to make it a little bit lighter, uh, you can add white or you can just water it down. So it's very, a very, very light uh, value and you get this beautiful peach. Um, blush, same kind of thing. You just wanna water your colors down. Okay, so it's a very vibrant pink. Swish your brush in your in around in your uh, water to make it a light value, and you have this blush color. Okay, again though, if you want to use white and have it to look a bit more opaque, let's see the difference here. That's a little bit darker. Hold on, but I'll show you the difference between adding white and just adding water. Okay, one is just more opaque. Same kind of color. One is just trans. Oh, it's really hard to see. One is just transparent, and the other one's opaque. Okay. Let's see a good burnt sienna. Okay. Let me see if I have a burnt sienna in my palette, so I can look at it and then try and replicate it. Hold on. Do I have one in this palette? <laughs> I have things that have fallen out. I think that, is this burnt sienna? I can't remember. I don't, no, I think that's burnt umber. I do have like a big thing of burnt sienna somewhere. I just cleaned my office. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Ah, I knew it. Okay. Told you I had a big thing of burnt sienna. I, I never bought this. This was given to me by someone. Okay, so, okay, hold on. Now, burnt sienna is like this orangey brown. It's really pretty. Okay, so when you're trying to learn how to mix a color, look at the base of the color. Like, what color do you see the most? Brown, we don't have brown in here, but we know we need to make brown. But what's the second color you might see? More, it's leaning mostly towards orange, okay? So we know that we need to use orange to make this mixture. So let's try our, or our red, which is more on the orangey side. And then we know we need to mute it. So I would say, hmm, orange's complementary color is blue. Let's try and add both blues to see which would work the best. Okay, kind of a 
it's all trial and error. You really just got to play around. Okay, so this makes it a little bit too red, so maybe a bit more orange or a bit more yellow. I think yellow. Ooh, look. And I made burnt sienna. <laughs> okay, so I used a little bit of blue and a bit more of that yellow. And that's almost spot on. That's so funny. And I think ultramarine wouldn't work because it's a bit too granulating. And yeah, it wants to mix purple. But again, mix a little bit of yellow in there. Similar. Okay, so let's try that again. So I have, or let's see if we can get there with our permanent yellow. Or no, cadmium yellow. So yeah, because it's a little bit more to that. So let's add a little bit of blue. Mm, nope, see the yellow was too yellow, so it makes it wants to make green. So we needed that red. So we did red, bit of blue, a bit more red, <laughs> and then our yellow here, a bit more yellow. Because you want it to be a bit more orangey, a bit more red. Okay. And then you can just keep adding more of whatever you think makes it brighter, like so, okay? Um, I have a hard time making nice golden yellow, like a marigold. Um, so mixing a primary color like a yellow is kind of hard. Uh, you can't really, you can't mix a yellow. You just have to buy a yellow. You have to buy a yellow that's closest to um, whatever color you want to mix. But you can always make yellows, like I can make, if I want to make this yellow a bit more like cooler, I could add a little bit of blue to it, just like a tiny bit. Nope, that's too much. No, oh, no, not too bad. A bit more though. So it has like a cooler lemony lime yellow to it. Or if I wanted to make a yellow warmer, I could even take this yellow, add a little bit of red to it and make it a warm yellow. You actually don't even need to buy two different yellows. You could always buy this lemon yellow because it's harder to mix and then add a little bit of red to it and you have a warm yellow. But it's harder to mix primary colors. Like you can't really mix a blue. Um, you can mix a red, which is interesting, which I will show you quickly. Yeah, a lemon yellow or like a primary yellow, a really cool yellow, tends to be more neon. Oh, someone also asked if they could mix neon colors, and unfortunately you can't. You can't mix it. You need to have, I don't even know what the pigment is, but you, you can't really mix neon. Um, you can mix bright, but not really neon. Like I couldn't really mix a neon pink. Um, so to make red, you would take pink and then like a bit of yellow. And then that's also like permanent, what is it? Permanent red light. We've mixed a red. It's the same color as this. Okay, so again, if if I were to say to pick four colors, you could pick primary yellow or a lemon yellow and a magenta and then two blues and you'd have the limited, most limited palette, but you could definitely mix like a billion colors with that. Okay, and then to make it a little bit more warmer, or not warmer, is it cooler? Oh my gosh, cooler or pinky, like a coral, a bit more pink with just a tad bit of yellow. <clears throat> but yeah, so that's kind of that. Um, lots of options that you can mix with just a really limited palette. Um, if color mixing is, oh, face cam. Oh, my camera turned off, hold on. If color mixing, oh no, hold on. Oh, there we go but I feel like I'm upside down now. Am I upside down? 
something happened to my camera. Ah, sorry guys. I don't know what's going on. Um, and I forgot what I was saying. Because my camera decided not to work for a second. Face cam. Why? Full face cam. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. Um, I'm going to tell my husband to come up here. Just because I don't know why that's not working now. Um, uh, I am so sorry. Come here, please. Come here, please. Uh, la la la. I don't remember what I was saying. Because now I'm distracted. Why is my face cam not working? I don't know what happened. What is happening? My face cam won't work. It's not working? No. We see you. Do you see my face though? Why? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. It's fine now. Can you guys see my face? It, it goes like in and out of black. Ah, technology is obnoxious. I don't understand this right now. I don't either. Everybody's still there. Yep. I gotta register them for French. Yep. Okay. Okay, guys, I won't be on camera right now. Um, now it's is... black. Yeah, can you go back? And now it's upside down. Is it what? What is going on? No face. Okay. One second. I don't understand what is happening right now. Why is this upside down? I don't know. What did you do? Okay, I'm almost done though. I don't think you did anything. What are you doing? Stop playing around like that. Why are you doing that? I'm flipping it back upside down. Right side up. I don't know what happened. But you're in the middle of a live. Yeah, I understand that. And there's no other way to do it other than this. Oh my goodness. Okay, there's no other better way to do it. Other than, oh, it's the wrong way. Oh my Oops. goodness. Sorry, everybody. Technical difficulties. What is happening? We've been seeing your face the entire time. What? I'm so confused. No, because this, like, I think that... I'm so confused. See hands. Okay. Ah! Okay. I don't understand what happened here. I don't know. But I'm so done with this. <laughs> Face cam. No. Okay. Well, guys, I'm so sorry that you can't see my face for the outro for this, but um, that's basically it. I hope that was informative as crappy as this whole situation is. Um, not my fault. It's his fault. I'm kidding. It's not. But um, I hope you guys en enjoyed it and you learned something from it. And I will see you in my next video. Um, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you being here um, and let me know in the comments what you guys thought of it. If there's anything I missed that you want to see more of, I'd love to do it. So have a great day. Bye. <laughs> my camera for my face is not on. I don't know. Thank you guys.